So some of you would have seen in the uh, December 15th update on Shape, there's a nice new thing, and, and Neil did a great demo of the uh, sweep profile orientation controls, uh, introducing lock face. Um, so it's well worth watching this video, of course, to get familiar with that. But uh, I thought I'd just do another kind of simplified but interesting, I think, uh, example of using it. You know, maybe a couple other tricks and, and tips along the way for uh, some of these surface modeling, curve modeling types of things. Anyway, it starts out with things I've got uh, put away in this setup um, folder of features. Uh, I put it in that folder because it really has no bearing on the rest of the uh, the demo and I just want to highlight the features that I actually use. So I've got two lofted faces here and the task and in fact this came from a, a question on our forum um, as a bit of a challenge. So anyway the task is that we want to create a, a kind of bridging surface as it were between these two and one end of, them, of the surface, the bridging surface, will be tangent to this and the other end will be at some arbitrary angle um, that can be varied. Uh, so, okay, there's, uh, there's a number of ways we could probably do that, and I've got, um, I've got one here. Oh, it was worth mentioning that uh, this, the connection points um, for the surface, uh, the bridging surface to these two here, uh, will be created by a projection of these sketch curves, which are sketched on uh, the bottom plane. Uh, we're going to project them up to the, uh, the top here. So I'm just using a projection on curve to face. So I pick the two curves here and pick the two faces as the targets and I'm projecting up in a direction. So this is a, a nice feature because you can actually collect a whole lot of things to do all at one time uh, even though these two targets are completely disjoint um, and the sketches indeed disjoint. I can, I can uh, project them up all in one. And now I've got, if I hide that sketch, I've got two curves here um, here. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a plane, and the, this plane is going to be defined at, as a curve point plane. So I'm going to choose this curve here, which is the one where I want to control the, the sort of the angle of incidence uh, onto it. So I just choose the point on the end of the curve and the curve itself, and it creates a little plane for me. I'm going to use that now as a sketch. Now I'm going to create a little profile here and let's go in and have a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the intersection between this plane and um, the, uh, the base surface here. All right, so I'm going to use that with construction geometry to give me this here. Then I drew this little line segment and constrained it to be tangent at that point to the construction geometry. Okay, so now I've got this curve, which is tangent. Um, you know, wherever this projected curve is going to be, it's going to be tangent where it touches. Okay, so I just made it two millimeters, uh, you know, arbitrarily just so that I could have a constraint sketch. I'm going to create a second line segment here and, you know, put it at some angle. Uh, it doesn't matter what angle is going to be at the moment. Um, it's just going to be constrained to be some kind of fixed angle from that first one, which is itself, you know, again, constrained to be tangent at that point. With that setup, I'm going to go to the sweep feature now. So let me hide that plane. Oops, plane. Um, I'll, before I unroll this one, I'll just show you a brand new sweep feature. So. You can pick uh, for a surface creation, you know, I'm going to pick these entities and I'm going to select that curve as the path and you can see how it creates uh, my swept surface there. And you can see the problem is that it doesn't stay, uh, you know, relative to the underlying geometry. It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to stay oriented properly. This is the reason that we introduced the lock profile faces option. This is the one that, um, you know, actually just running through these other options, you know, you, you can keep the profile orientation. That's not going to help us either. Uh, but the one that will help us is the lock profile faces. So I can choose this big gray face or set of faces to be the reference. So if, um, if I hit that, you'll see now that the sweep orientation is keeping exactly 
in uh, in in line and and um, you know, tangent all the way along to that reference phase. Now that's got an interesting property for us, uh, and that's exactly what I did in, in this feature here. It's got an interesting property because at all points along the way, you know, we've got this 30 degree uh, that we defined, remember, before. And at the other end of it, it will maintain that 30 degree angle as well. Now, in fact, if you want to convince yourself that this is working well, uh, you can just cut a cross section. Uh, maybe I'll just cut a cross section, you know, some arbitrary point <laughs> across there. You can use the measurement tools to do some interesting things here. So if I select the straight edge of that sweep and then the face underlying, you can see that the face tangent angle is zero. So in fact, it has done what we asked it to do. It's kept this thing tangent all the way along, um, even though this underlying face is doing some funny things. Uh, you know, th there's all sorts of curvature in there. But through this cross section here, I can also measure if I use the measurement tool, I can choose that edge and this face. And you'll see the tangent angle is not zero, but it's pretty, pretty close to zero, um, you know, due to tolerances and, um, you know, things like that. And it's, it's not likely to stay exactly at zero, but very, very close to uh, within tolerances here. So again, you know, we could choose that edge there. And again, we have the face tangent angle. Um, OK, I'll do it one more time. Choose the measurement tool. Face tangent angle now is 0.03, right? So it's pretty close to zero. So convincing ourselves that that has done what it's uh, what it needs to do, then we can also measure the face tangent angle of this extra little bit of the surface. And you can see here it's 30 degrees. Uh, again, we can do our measurement and see that that is you know, 30 degrees. So all good. How are we going to use this? Now, I'm going to do a couple of things first, uh, just to make the uh, the final um, surface um, even more effective. I'm going to create a couple of bridging curves. Now, this bit is entirely optional, but I, I'm just going to do it for for clarity and, and for completeness. I've created a bridging curve, and I've defined the bridging curve as being tangent at this end, and I'm using the uh, the face of the loft as one reference and this vertex at the end of the curve as the other reference. All right. At the second end of the bridging curve up here, I'm using the edge of that, uh, that sort of sweep face or the sweep edge that we created before. I'm using it as the reference along with its vertex. So now you can see where this 30 degree angle that we defined before is coming from. Um, and it's going to be something that we can change later, of course. So now I've got that bridging curve. I've done the same thing at the other end. Remember making this tangent with that little line segment or the, the edge of the face that we created during the sweep. Now having those, all those constructions in place, I'm going to create a boundary surface. A boundary surface is a really simple one here. You know, we've got two U curves in one direction and then the two V curves in the other direction. And for each of the U curves, I'm making them a match tangent um, connection type here. So the boundary condition here is match tangent. I'm just matching this curve tangent to this face. Right. And on the other end, you know, I can, uh, you can probably see where this is going now. I'm using this face down here, which was created using that lock option in the sweep as the tangent reference. Um, for the boundary surface. So it's a boundary condition that's going to apply all the way along the boundary of the surface. <laughs> so now, and I usually call these things helper surfaces. Uh, you can see down here in the, the list in the feature tree, that thing I created, I call a helper surface at angle. Uh, it's done its job now. We've created the new surface. What we can do um, is come back to the sketch, remember, that we created for the sweep profile. Now the sketch in here, I just put in a 30 degree angle, but let's do something better than that and make a variable. Um, angle for sweep. Oh, no, 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 connection. 
we can make that 30 degrees still. You can see now that we've got a variable in the variable list. And what is nice is that I can just leave this variable table open and start changing this. And you can see the magic happening. Um, you know, I can change this. And the boundary condition of this connection is now completely controlled um, all the way along this boundary, along this edge of the, of the boundary surface um, using this variable. So we can go to five degrees, uh, we can go to 45 degrees, or as I had before, 90 degrees. Um, so that's a nice little trick there, uh, using the lock face option with the new sweep. And there's probably a, little, a few little other tips and tricks in there that you could get something from, um, hopefully as well.